Okay, so uh, just real quick, in case somebody asks, I know where they will. This is just a, um, a DIY etched board that I did myself. It has an Atmega 328 uh, TQFU package on TQFP package, um, a 5 volt regulator, 3.3 volt regulator, a couple capacitors, and a crystal. And this is basically just a easy Arduino board I did myself. Um, any Arduino will work. I have uh, two of the regular ones. They're all the same as long as it has the um, female headers. So let's talk about the board I designed. Now, this is, again, not my design. Julian designed this, and he posted his schematic. And I just took the schematic, and on EagleCAD, I made a board. Now, a couple things to note. The goals of this board were to, one, make it work. Two, make it easy to connect with these um, screw terminals as well as make it do-it-yourself or um, etchable. Uh, I wanted to make it where I could etch it myself at home. So, um, there is no 5-volt regulation on this board like there is in Julian's original design because the Arduino has it. The other thing is, uh, another design requirement I had is I wanted to be able to make it where you can literally plug and play. So, if you didn't want to make your own Arduino board, you could buy a simple Arduino from anywhere and then plug this right into it and you're ready to go. So let's flip it over here. On the back, you'll notice I did super duper thick traces. I wanted them nice and thick so they were easy to etch yourself, easy to solder, the whole deal. It's all single sided, no jumpers at the top. Again, I made this board really big so I could do single sided. Now how I make my boards is the photo resist method. I uh, printed out. I went to, um, it was, I believe it was Office Depot. I had them print uh, my PDF from Eagle CAD of the board design to the laser transparency. It cost about 50 cents for them to do that. Later, over top the board with um, a light, and I just use a simple um, CFL type squiggly bulb here and the um, a little light. It's a little, I believe it's a 100 watt version, so like 13 watts or something the CFL bulb is. And I'll leave it under the light for 10 minutes, um, rinse it in some photo resist, and then etch it in ferric chloride. And then this is what's re the result. Um, I do have uh, the MG Chemicals Liquid 10 that I tend the board with just to protect the copper. And that's it. Now it works great. Now this is um, the Rev 5 board because the first board I did was I uh, messed it up. So, uh, my thoughts for moving forward, you could send these files to like OSH Park and have them, you know, make your own boards, but it's about $30 for three. So, it's about $10 for one of these boards. So, again, I made it big so that you could do it yourself. Um, these connectors are supposed to be able to handle, I believe it said five amps, so more than enough for a 100 watt solar panel. The other thing is, I don't have in there is the inline. Um, diode that protects the solar panel and the battery. Uh, that's would be in his yellow wire. I did not include that because it gets pretty hot and I want to be able to mount that externally. So yeah, so anyhow, it's pretty simple. You can modify the code to blink your LED at the rate, like he has it where it blinks the battery voltage. I didn't do that. Um, I wanted to be able to visually see what the PWM was doing for testing. So you can easily change that into code. I will post the board files down below in the video description. Okay, again, I did not design the PWM charge controller. Julian did. I just used his schematics to make this hardware board. Um, I'll post them down below if you want to make your own. If you have any suggestions or improvements, please post them. Let people know down below. The other thing I'm going to do is might try to condense this down to make it a little smaller using double side because if we can cut this board in half that'll cut the price when you send it to osh park down and then it might be worthwhile just for them to produce the boards and then you get the solder resist and all the other fancy stuff of a professional professional board manufacturer and that will be worth it all right good morning everybody welcome back carl again uh, today i'm going to talk about my um, arduino uh, pwm solar charge controller now, I can take very little credit for this, so this is a lot of work of Julian, um, Julian Eilat. Uh, you got to check his channel out. His website is 256.co.uk, and um, he's graciously posted his code, and he's been going over it, and if you've been following any of his videos, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. 
So this is my Arduino shield that I made of the PWM5. Um, once we go through it, I'll take it apart and show you uh, how I designed it. Uh, this is an Arduino, uh, my do-it-yourself Arduino at the bottom. Uh, with his PWM5 can code. The LED there is connected to pin 10 because it's a PWM pin, and it's doing the exact same thing as pin 9, which is actually the output to the battery. So I have a small 12 volt lead acid battery. Now I'm using my bench power supply as the solar panel because it's not very sunny today here, and it's pretty early in the morning, so I need to make my own solar uh, power. So I have it set about 16 volts and 25 milliamps. That's what it's kind of set to meter over here shows the battery voltage and then of course the oscilloscope is actually connected to pin 9 and you can see the small pulse width that it's actually given to keep the battery charged. If I probe pin number 3 and pin number 11 which is the charge pump circuit. Okay so if I probe, probe pin 3 that's the yellow there as you can see it's uh, a nice square wave and that's for the charge pump. And then if I take and disconnect this one for pin number one, so I'm going to probe pin three, and then I'm going to probe pin 11, which is the charge pump circuit. And as you can see, I have the nice, the every other time cycle of the square ways to get the charge pump for the high side driver. And if you've seen his video, he talks a lot about how that works. All right, nevertheless, let's go back to pin 9. And there is the PWM of the solar charge controller. And you can see the light is blinking. I don't know how if the camera is going to pick that up or not, but you can see the light blinking. And I have just this small little light bulb here. Let's put a small load on the the battery and you'll see what happens here so there you see it goes to almost a hundred percent the solar panel or in this case the charge controller the, the bench power supply has basically going to current regulation at 0.27 amps because there's not enough to cope with this bulb and so if I take it off you can see we're solid red we're still at 0.27 and so now it's going to take just a second for the battery to catch up on the charge. And then once it catches up, you'll see the PWM start. All right, and there you go. There's the light blinking again. Hopefully the camera will pick the blinking up. And then there is the regulation. Okay, so I got it working. It's a working prototype. Uh, let me move all this junk off my desk and I'll show you the board and let you know how I did it.